Well, hello friends. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, work with colored pencil on colored paper using impress lines today. And we're going to do a um, drawing of a peacock feather. If you have one, if you happen to have a peacock feather at your home or wherever you're doing this tutorial, um, it will help you, but you don't necessarily have to have one in front of you. The pattern is pretty easy to follow along with and you'll be able to do this project even if you don't have a peacock feather. So, um, let me go through and tell you, first of all, that you will need a soft surface to work on. So if you're working on a hard desk, go get a magazine or a pad, a uh, piece of cardboard, something that you can work on top of, because this will help your impress lines to be deeper and more visible. Uh, let's go through the materials that you're going to need for this project. So, I have a piece of Canson uh, pastel paper here, it's colored. It, Canson pastel paper comes in a wonderful variety of different colors that you can get at um, some of the art and hobby stores. And um, this is a wonderful paper because it is fairly thin, so the impress lines go in pretty pretty well, but it's tough enough that you won't be cutting through your paper. Uh, one side of the paper is smooth, the other side has a little bit of a texture to it that looks kind of like a canvas texture. Um, when you're using some of your color on here, you will see that texture uh, develop. So if you don't want that texture in your piece, you can use the smooth side. It really doesn't make a difference with this particular project, which side you use. Um, I'm going to use the smooth side uh, just so that you can see the impress lines a little easier and not have that texture in there. So, uh, you will of course need a pencil sharpener. You can use a manual pencil sharpener or uh, electric. A pencil, and I'm just using a regular mechanical pencil that you pick up at the grocery store. This has a number two lead in it. And two lead is neither too hard nor too soft. Uh, what I find good about this type of lead is that it's not so soft that when I rub it off or brush it off that it smears. Um, it's also not so hard that when I'm drawing or working with it that it's making divots and dents in my paper and adding impress lines that I don't want. So this is going to work out pretty well for me. I am using Prismacolor pencils on this project. You can use any wax base pencil that you like. Um, the set, this the 24 set, actually has some of the colors that I'm, it has all the colors that I'm going to be working uh, with in this project. Let me go through those real quick for you. Naturally I'm going to use white and black. And then uh, the white I'm going to use is a background color. The black will just add some drama and some shadow here and there. Um, on the peacock feather itself, let's go from the center out. For the center circle in here, I'm going to use indigo blue and here it is, the violet. You could use violet blue too. The violet blue is really a pretty color. Um, for the next circle that's blue and green, I'm going to use a true blue and a true green. That's these two. For the brown circle in there that's kind of egg-shaped, I'm going to use goldenrod and a sienna brown. And then for this outer green outside of the brown area, and for some of the fronds coming out here farther, I'm going to use the apple green and at times maybe a little bit more of that true green. The true green is much more blue um, and has a much higher chroma than the apple green. The apple green is much more uh, yellow, if you will, and uh, a little more dull. So, now you can also use the dark green in there if you like, just to get some of these other darker fronds in. Um, it's just a matter of opinion whether you want those in there or not. And then I need a tool to impress with. And I have um, embossing tools that I like to use a lot of times for this. Uh, you can get these at the art and craft stores, but if you don't have this tool, you'll notice this one has two different sizes on it. I have several of these in varying sizes. Um, if you don't happen to have this tool, there's a variety of things that you can find around the house that you could use. This is actually a knitting needle and it does a wonderful job. Uh, and it's thick enough that it's not too uncomfortable to hold on to. It's kind of nice that way. You could even use your mechanical pencil. If you push the lead in or even take the lead out, you'll find that it also will work fine for impress lines. I'll sit down there. Um, what an impress line is, let me explain that to you real quickly. 
Uh, impressed lines are basically scratches or divots, dents in your paper that cause your pencil to miss those areas and leave the color of the paper in, in place. So if I use a tool to scratch in an indented line and I go back with a pencil, that was a pretty thin line, but you can kind of see that my indentations are staying there. Okay, now that being said, if you put down a color and then you use this to impress some more lines or indent them in there, then I come back with another color on top of that, I can save out that color too. So you can use impressed lines in so many fun ways. Let's get started on this project. So I'm going to figure out how I want this feather to lay on here. Uh, I'm going to draw the stem of the feather first and I'm going to draw it actually with my impressing tool. I'm going to figure out where it starts. I'm going to, I think I'll have my feather coming in from the left over here and I'm, you could let it, let me look at all the different ways that I could do this. Mm. Yeah, I like it this way. Okay, so my stem probably starts somewhere in there and I see it sweeping off to the corner. So I'm going to, with a good amount of pressure, make a stem. And you can come back if you don't feel like it's gonna be thick enough and you can go back and if you don't follow completely along the same line, it's not a big deal. You should be able to feel your indentation there. You should not go all the way through the paper, but if you feel the indentation on the back side, it's not a big deal. You just don't want to have a tool that's so sharp that it cuts your paper. Okay, now, uh, having done that, now I can grab my pencil and right in the center here, I'm going to start drawing this pattern in the center of the feather. And I'm going to start with the outer shapes and move in. If you've watched any of my um, tutorials on or demonstrations on sketching, you'll know that I like to convert things into shapes, makes it simplifies everything, makes it easier to get them in the right places and um, figure out your proportions and the sizes and everything in relation to everything else. So I am not going to use a heavy hand and put in really dark, um, you can't see that I know, but if I press really hard, I'm going to be making impressed lines with my pencil. I don't want to do that. I want to make an egg shape for that brown area. And mine is quite a bit bigger than this one is. I'm going to exaggerate just a little bit so you can really see this project well. Okay, um, I'm satisfied with that. So now I'm going to make the next shape inside, which is a circle with the top chopped off. So why don't I start out with a circle? I'm almost making an egg or a, an avocado shape here. And I'll just chop off that top, right? Now, if you're working on a really dark paper like I am, mine is a uh, navy blue, um, you may have to pick it up and, and move it around a little bit to be able to see the lines you've drawn. But I find that this side is a little bit wide, isn't it? So I'm going to size it down just a little. Okay. Now I'm going to draw the next shape in, which is this indigo shape and boy it's really close up to the top here has a little bit of a pac-man look to it it's a circle a circle with a triangle cut out so draw your circle first then cut out the triangle right just like so now i've got a lot of graphite here and i one thing i know about wax based pencils is that they like to pick up it picks up the graphite and makes muddy areas. So I'm going to clean it up just a little bit. I don't think it's going to be a big problem with some of my really bright colors, but when I go to put my white down for a background, definitely it will pick up. So be a little bit careful about that. Now, um, I also have a little area here of green. It's like a triangle. I'm going to give myself just a little hint of where that is and make that triangle. And then I'm going to set my feather right on top of what I just drew. And I notice that these fronds are all about the same length. So I'm going to draw just little bits of line 
out to the edges of those. Now if you do not have the feather, um, just know that it's about a, uh, about an inch and a half to two inches away from the tip of your yoke and you're just making a little um, arch over that. You don't want to draw a direct line. You could, but I want to give some visual relief because what you'll notice about this uh, feather is that there are little areas where there's some visual relief here. You see that there's it's not just a whole wreath of uniform fronds going all the way across. So I want to um, make sure that I make those little spaces in there as well, right? So I'm going to give myself a few little hints of where those are. So for the most part, now I'm going to go with my eraser. This is something I kind of like to do to drawings and just make them into dotted lines um, by just running over it real quick with my eraser so that it's not quite so strong. All right, pretty well there with our drawing. We're ready to start putting in impress lines and get coloring. Our impressed lines come from the center of the stem. My stem could have come all the way up here. I'll just go ahead and add it. Um, and in the center of this, the impressed lines that I want to make, I'm going to start working with the impressed lines in this area. What they are are going to be darker lines. So those darker lines are what are in between each of these fronds. And I don't want to draw every single one of them, obviously, but I just want to give indication of what's happening there, right? So they're all coming from the stem and they're kind of going out to the outer edges. I'm not going to go all the way to the ends of my frond because I won't have that much control if I do that. I may go out too far and then it, these fronds will be all different sizes and I don't want that. So I'm just going to work on this part first and I'm going to start um, by making wispy lines back and forth. Now I'm not scribbling back and forth because I don't want loops at the ends of these, right? So you can hear I'm putting in pretty strong lines and I'm following the shape that egg shape but everything's coming from that center okay good and I should be able to feel it this is good if I don't feel like it went up high enough then I can go back in not a big deal now I'm going to come from the other side and go back down and I'm going to turn my page around just because it's more comfortable to my hand and because I can also see my uh, pencil spots of how far these fronds should go. So I'm just following back down to those lines that I made. Most of them are going to start from this line so that I'll have more control about how far out they're going because I don't want them. Uh, to go some to go longer than others, really, not by much. Okay, I can feel all of that, so that's great. Okay, and then kind of incorporate, make sure I can see my indented lines. Uh, I want to make sure that it kind of feeds back into the lines that are in the egg shape. Now, I've got all of that in. I feel pretty comfortable with that. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go back and erase out the graphite little bits of line that I put in there because I don't want that to mix with my white. All gone. Just like that. Okay. All set. Now, looking at the fronds down here, these are all indented lines as well. So I want to look and I notice that as I come down here, all of a sudden I've got uh, uniform space in between the fronds. So I'm going to pay attention as I come down. The other nice thing I notice is they're still pretty much the same length, but here's some fun things you can do. You can just make them go over one another here and there, go out different ways. Some of them have kind of a nice little curve. Um, the nature of feathers is if I press this a little bit, look at some of these cool tendrils and things that are happening here that are really, look at this one right here. Wow, beautiful. So if I wanted to, I could add some of that in here too, right? For me, the most comfortable way of doing that is to turn my page. Um, you can see that I've been messing around with this, but I can try with a pencil to see what is the easiest way for me to make a frond that looks like it's like that, right? What ways do my does my hand work that allows me to make that shape really easy? So I'm going to start out with putting in some fronds. 
Some might cross over others. I'm remembering to use a heavy hand. And then some of them are going to have those little tendril things happening. Just for fun, just to see how they come out. Kind of the fun thing about using impress lines is sometimes you really don't know what you're going to get until you start to put down that background color and then um, it's really interesting and really pretty what you end up with. Now, if you've done this project more than one time, what you will know, uh, know about it is that some of these really fluffy fronds in here, some of these fronds that have all these little hairs on them, you could go in here and make some squiggles on some of these long fronds and it will show up uh, when you go in later to put in that background and they're really pretty but I'm not going to do that in each of these it'll take me some time to do that and I don't want it everywhere so I'm going to sharpen up real quick here and let's get started let's start putting the color in I'm going to go from the center out so I'm going to start out working with the indigo and the violet Oh, black. Nope. Indigo. Here we go. Once I look at it, I say, hmm, this is much darker than the page. So there we go. I'm going to make an outline around that shape that I drew so that I can easily see where I'm trying to stay in the lines. Color it in. Great. And then I'm going to add some nuances of the violet. And I'm not going to color the entire thing in. I'm just going to put a little bit here and there to indicate light reflection. Ready to go to the blue and the green. This is going to come together pretty quickly. Um, once again, I'm going to draw an outline of the shape that I had in there. And I know you have a lot of impressed lines in there now, so it may not be that easy to see those lines. If you can't see them, then it's okay. Just go ahead and draw it in. Do know that if you draw something in with colored pencil and you feel like you don't like that shape, you can go back with your eraser and erase out some of it. That's not going to be the worst thing in the world. It might um, obscure your, some of your impress lines slightly, but not enough to ruin the piece. So my shape ended up changing just a little bit there, but that's okay. I don't mind. The peacock feather is really just a pattern so that we know what a peacock feather looks like. Now I put down the blue first. Now I'm putting in just a touch of the green to show that indication of reflected life. You could... Um, Put down the green first and put the blue down as reflected light too. Neither way is right or wrong. Okay, now I'm ready to move on to my brown um, part of the feather, and I'm going to use this um, this goldenrod. And goldenrod may look like it's really too yellow, but it will pick up some of the the hint of the paper behind it and turn brown so don't worry too much these pencils are not extremely opaque they are to some extent transparent I look like I'm going to be making my own egg shape because I don't really see much of the egg shape that I put on there but I've done it once so now I'm more confident and no problem and I'm going to outline the blue that I put in look at how lovely this color goes in on the blue and this paper has so much nice tooth that it's really easy to get that color down. Now I'm going to go back with the sienna brown and I'm going to once again add just a little hint of light reflecting. So I don't want to cover the whole thing. I just want to add a little bit here, a little bit there to give an indication that light is reflecting inside of this. You can see all of my impressed lines happening in here. It's really lovely. Okay ready to move out to the green outer part and I'm using the apple green now and I'm going to use a scribble motion following the lines these impressed lines I don't want to go this way or make a big lollipop line around it necessarily I'm going to use a scribble stroke that's going to follow those impressed lines all the way around that green and that brown are really pretty next to one another. And I see all those wonderful impressed lines, really nice. Um, 
if I want to add in a little bit of the highlight that's happening here, I can go back with my true green, which is much more, remember it's got a lot more blue and it's got a really high chroma, it's much more bright. Um, strong. Or intense, isn't it? And maybe just a little hint of it over here too. Pretty. Now, as I look at this feather, just while I'm here, I'm thinking to myself, I see what feels like there's a little bit of a darker line around some parts of the color where between the two colors. So I'm just going to add it in. You don't necessarily have to do this. This is just something that my eye sees, so I'm going to I'm going to add it in. Not all the way around. I don't want a direct line all the way around, but just like so. Okay. That was the center. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? So now let's get into this background because when I want to do these tendrils and these fronds all the way around, I want to make a, a really obvious where they are. I can't really see them that well right now. So I'm taking my white. I have sharpened it well, holding it on its side. And I'm just going to rub over this. Not over the entire thing up here, but down at the base. And I'm going to follow, you know, to some extent I'm following the direction of those impressed lines again. If I go this way, I might put in strokes that won't go away later and they just look really unnatural. So you can press pretty hard in this area and not lose your impressed lines. See that? Now as I come up closer to the top of this, whoop, need to sharpen once more. Soft pencils, aren't they? And go up here. Now I'm going to look and see where my impress lines are up here, and I can see them reflecting. And I'm going to go across the top of those. I see some of those little areas where there's some visual relief, where the in between the fronds. How's that? It's almost like eyelashes, really stunning soft. Okay, and come back out here. This color comes in so easy. Really wonderful thing about using colored paper is um, your, light, your colors just blast on certain, certain colors especially. Now with the point of my pencil I can come back here and there and just add a few little spots, right? Because that's really kind of what's happening. And I also can go in here with what's left of the point. It's not completely a point on the pencil right now. It's really worn down from my rubbing on here, but just go back in and kind of give it a more natural and more bright look in here. Perfect. Just like that. Okay, we're on the home stretch. I'm going to come back with my green. And I'm going to use a light stroke and just wispy in here. I don't want to lose all the blue that's in the background because I like the fact that it's toning down my color. And because I see a little bit of, um, this is kind of grayed out or has a little bit of this brown in it. These are close to being complementaries. The green um, and this sienna brown, because the sienna brown has a lot of red in it, and red and green are complementary. So just a little hint of that sienna brown in there I don't think is wrong. Okay, and then if you feel like it's too strong in some places, just go back over it with your green, and it will tone it down and gray it down a little. Um, there's a little bit of highlight happening on the feather on those tips. So with a point, I'll go back in there. Some of these are crossing over. Now I'm going to come back with my indigo. And just reinforce some of these lines, just real briefly. Go back with my green down in here to incorporate some of what's happening here. And down into the stem a little bit.
not the full length of these fronds. You don't want to make every one of these green from one end to the other, um, but where the light would maybe hit it, there's little bits of it. There's some of my squiggled fronds over there. Okay, now I still feel like I have a little bit of a lollipop happening here, so I'm going to go back and reshape that because it's far more sparse up here. So, and I want there to be some crossover as well. So, I'm going to go back in here. Now I'm going to take my black and I'm going to put in a few of the shadows. I don't really want to ever draw a long straight black line on things, but I like to reinforce some of these lines here. Um, I also am going to go back in here and reinforce a little bit of this center because I feel like it's kind of obliterated and not sharp, not as sharp as I'd like it to be. I see a really strong highlight of green right there. And around the edge. Okay. I'm going to reinforce some of those lines in there. Come back with the white. At this point you've really put down a lot of um, parts. Here's the black again, making a few fronds that are crossing over so it's not so uniform. You've gotten down quite a bit of your so you know where everything goes. So this, at this point, don't worry about your front anymore. Put it away and let yourself just put in what you think looks good. Okay? So there you go. I'm going to stop here. You could keep going. I'm certain I can keep going with this all day too because it's just fun. But um, this is just a little help for you understanding impress lines and using colored paper. I hope you had fun with it today, and if you enjoyed this demo, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.